Good morning, church. It's a glorious morning to be out. I'm really glad to be here this morning. I hope I don't bore you to death. <laughs> As Gideons, we don't don't have a lot of new things to offer. We do the same thing here, year in and year out. And all of it's about this little little thing here we call the New Testament. We give out these by the thousands wherever we get a chance. We also place full-size Bibles as well, but we like touting a little bit about these little testaments that we uh, we carry around and distribute whenever we get the chance. Gideon's in a nutshell is kind of summed up in Psalms 68, verse 11. Short verse, it's to the point. It says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who published it. That is Gideon organization, and the Gideon organization are funded by you all, and the members of Gideon organization come from you all. We all come from churches, we all are volunteers, and that's where it all starts. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, by two men in, in Wisconsin, this ministry was started right here in the United States. I probably mentioned that the last time I was here, it's been a while, but uh, I hate to repeat, but it is a fact that uh, two men, the Lord blessed with starting this ministry and it has grown till it's, it's 200 countries. Uh, we print these little testaments and Bibles in 109 different languages. So wherever they go, they can read it in their own language and interpret it much better. Uh, last year, the physical year, we placed 46 million of these little testaments around the world. Uh, here in Pendleton County, I'm a member of the local camp here in Pendleton County. I have been for several years now. Uh, we like to, to boast about what we do sometimes. We're not supposed to. And here in the county, we're down to five men members and four lady auxiliary members. Uh, it's about a little less than half of what it was when I first joined. Uh, our membership is aging, and I'll hit on that a little bit later on in my presentation, but right here in your, your church community, from church donations like you all this morning, we will ask for an offering of anything you have extra that God's blessed you with, to purchase Bibles with. From our church donations here in Pendleton County, we gathered $6,535 last year, in our last fiscal year. We, uh, we have sponsored this card ministry. I don't know if you're aware of it uh, or if you use it. I looked around this morning looking for uh, our donation. Uh, we have a donation rack that puts these cards in it that you can use as a church or individuals. You donate money Bibles and someone's in memory of. We have in thinking of you cards. We have cards for birthdays, any kind of celebration. But you can donate to the Gideons money that will buy testaments in that person's name. That card ministry, especially with, with COVID and everything the last few years, has really blossomed because a lot of people have started using that more than their church donations <clears throat> at times because it's easier and safer to use. And it is keeping someone's memory alive or a, a birthday and celebration of someone's birthday. I was telling them in Sunday school this morning, my mother just celebrated her 90th, birth, 90th birthday last Sunday. We had a little party for her at her church. Uh, my sisters and I put together in her church family, and she had a great crowd. And I had an aunt that that uh, is my mother's sister. She gave 90 Bibles in my mother's name because... She says, your mother has everything. She doesn't need anything, but these Bibles will go a long way, which they will. We, we never know what the Lord is going to do with his testaments. Uh, we know he has a purpose for them, and he know, we know that he will use them in someone's life. A lot of the times we get a lot of testimonies in where he's used this little testament more than once in more than one family's life. 
we just get them in all the time that says the, the testament that we passed out was the only Bible they had in a community and they, they shared it and many lives were changed by just one testament and we know that happens we believe that and uh, <clears throat> that is one thing we strive to do but she had a great birthday and uh, a lot of there was two or three others that give Bibles in her memory as well. Not her memory, but in celebration of her birthday. Those card donations, our last physical year, just here in the county, were $6,696. Uh, then we have what we call a faith fund that uh, the Gideon members are self. We, we donate money as well throughout the year. We have our own little uh, faith fund uh, promotions and our, our times of year that we do different things plus our banquet that we have once a year uh, that, that often we take up at that banquet goes into that faith fund and uh, we had a $5,725 donation of our last fiscal year to that faith fund the lady auxiliaries they have a a uh, scripture fund that they donate to throughout the year to, uh, just to purchase scriptures through the auxiliary program and they donated $310 last year just right here in the county which made a total of $19,266 just from five men and four women keeping the Gideon Camp alive here in Pendleton County which translates into 10,427 testaments bought right here in the county now a lot of these Testaments uh, come right, right back home. Uh, the Gideons here in the county, we've been doing a couple new things. Year before last, we started, we built us a little float. And we had a Gideon float in the Christmas parade in Falmouth. And uh, we did it again this past Christmas, uh, this past December. Uh, and we carried the we put our grandchildren, most of us are old, so we put grandchildren on there. We don't, very many of us have children on there. <laughs> but uh, we put our grandchildren on there, and they ride on the float, and the Gideons walk beside the float and carry Bibles and pass them out throughout the entire uh, parade route. And uh, last year in Falmouth, we passed out a little over 400 testaments along that parade route in Falmouth. And this year, for the first time, we did the Butler Christmas Parade. We missed it the year before. Uh, we didn't get to, to be in it the year before, but we went, were here in Butler and uh, brought our little float down and our grandkids and had a big time. We passed 200 plus testaments out right here in Butler. Those testaments we sent in to the Gideons, uh, the international office, and order those. Those are paid for by the money the church has donated in this county. So a lot of the donations that we ask for in this county, they come right back here. And they're used right here at home. And uh, we're awful proud of that. <clears throat> the Gideons uh, have uh, started a little program here a few years back. It's called Friends of Gideons, which you can be a member of and uh, donate to the Gideons through it. Plus, with being a Friends of Gideon's, it's, it doesn't cost you anything. You just sign up online, and you get our uh, bi-monthly magazine. It tells you what we've been up to, a lot of places we've been. There's a lot of information about Gideon's. But you also have the opportunity to purchase your own little testaments if you want to pass some out on your own or if you have your own little distribution set up uh, in Butler or wherever. But it allows you to purchase them yourself, the Gideon's uh, the Gideons, like they've had bylaws for years and years, that if it's a Gideon testament, a Gideon has to pass it out. That's what we were taught. That's what we, what we were, when we were brought into the Gideon membership, that's what they told us we had to do. We're not allowed to give them to somebody else to pass out. Well, they're using this friends of Gideons to kind of get around that. The testaments you would purchase through this are a little different color. They're gray for the most part, I think. Uh, that's what they are now, but they don't have the Gideon logo on them. It's exactly the same testament. It's got all the same verses in it, the same helps. It's got the plan of salvation in the back of every testament that we pass out, but they don't have the logo on them, so they, they allow you to purchase those yourself, and you can use them in your own 
personal distribution if you would like. Now, as a camp here in Pendleton County, we decided because you have to purchase them through Friends of Gideon's, we have a lot of people ask us, you know, can you give me 15 Bibles to put here, to put there, to put in these Christmas boxes that a lot of churches do? We decided as a camp, we take some of our faith fund money and we keep these little gray testaments in stock now. So if you do need some, we have them and we will give them to you if you could use those to, uh, to do any kind of uh, uh, missions on your own. Uh, the Bible app the Gideons have, I know most people have got one of these special phones to carry on their side. I used to didn't carry mine in the church, but I do nowadays just for for this purpose, basically. Those fancy phones you can sit on and call your friends without knowing it. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing sometimes. But they do have a very good Bible app they have put together. It's free. Go to your app store, just Google Gideon Bible app, and it will be the first one that pops up. It has a very, very good search window on it. You can type in any type of phrase or any type of situation you're going through, and it will bring up the different chapters in the Bible that addresses that. Uh, I typed in this morning, uh, giving back. That's all I put in there. And it brought up several verses where God talks about his people giving back. And that's what Gideon's tried to do. We try to give back as much as possible with your help, as always. Uh, but that is something that you can use and uh, download for free on your smartphone. I'd like to read a little passage back in 2 Corinthians that has a lot to do with the way Gideon's operate. And uh, we like to, to uh, call these Old Testament seeds a lot of the time because they are. They're God's Word. And uh, He uses them, and it is a seed. It's like planting a seed in someone's hand when you hand one of those out. But there's several verses here, and I like to read 2 Corinthians uh, 9, 7 through 11. It says, Every man, according as he purposed in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loveth a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work as it is written he hath dispersed abroad he hath given to the poor his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase, increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness for causes though through us thanksgiving to God. This morning is offering this morning will be a part of that you are supplying seeds the Gideons get to be the sowers a lot of the times not always but uh, as far as the donations this morning also uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this but in the United States because the ministry was started here only 50% of the money that we gather through our churches through this Gideon card program is allowed to be sent overseas. Uh, we do a lot of work overseas. Uh, most of our information, our pamphlets, if you look at the bulletin I give you this morning, it's always got a place overseas. Most of the children you see on there are overseas, but only 50% of the money that's raised here in the United States is allowed to be used overseas. The rest of it has to come right back to here to be used, which is part of the, the Bibles that we get when we pass out at, at the Christmas parades and uh, other places. We still go back into our local doctor's offices here every year and make sure there's Bibles in those places. Uh, we even, we've branched out, we 
we even took one to the animal shelter this year to <laughs> make sure he had one out there. But uh, we tried to get into uh, businesses and any place that could have a place to have a Bible uh, on display for someone to, to use, to read, to take. Uh, that's why we go back every year. We encourage people to take them if they don't have a Bible. We'll come back and replenish that supply each and every year. We check, make sure there's something going on there. Uh, where did I go? My card's out of order. <laughs> I don't know if there's probably been a Gideon here at all that, that didn't read to you the Isaiah 55 scripture. Uh, it's God telling us again about his word. Uh, my wife forced me to start a Facebook account when I retired from my Lexington job. I never did do that before. <laughs> but I, I was cleaning up my building in, in Falmouth that I own and, and trying to get a little business started there again. I've got, I'm a hoarder. I've got a lot of stuff that I need to get rid of. So I was selling it on her Facebook account. And she got tired of everybody bugging her about what I was trying to sell or asking for information. So she forced me to get my own Facebook account. And um, earlier this week, uh, I kept, was following a post, and somebody had posted on the, on the Facebook a little cartoon character. And the guy was outside, and he was looking up into the clouds, and he said, Lord, please speak to me. And all you see was a hand coming down out of the clouds with a Bible in it. That's the way the Lord speaks to us sometimes, folks. We're supposed to read our Bible every day if possible, but reading the Bible draws us closer to Him, and, and we learn a, a lot through that. Um, as Gideon, I'm not supposed to be up here preaching, but it is part of what we do. We, uh, we try to have uh, Scripture reading and Bible reading at every one of our Gideon meetings. We, uh, we have a prayer, prayer list three different prayer lists that we pass amongst ourselves that we uh, have a daily prayer calendar that we go over in three different aspects of the Gideons and we lift them up in prayer each and every day. I do want to thank you. I saw my wife's name on your all's prayer list. I do want to thank you for that. We do believe in prayer. We know prayer works. She is doing very well. Uh, she's still asking for prayers because it's not completely over yet. She's still taking a little... She's got to take some medicine for about five years and she's hoping that uh, will be she'll be able to tolerate that but uh, she has come through her cancer uh, event very very well she's been very blessed and I thank you for having her on your prayer list we also talked this morning in Sunday school about how we sometimes we need to wait on the Lord and uh, that is the older I become the more evident that is in my life that a lot of times we ask for stuff and we don't see an immediate impact, but we do need to focus down the road and continue to wait because we know a prayer will be answered in one way or another at the perfect time. And uh, it has been that way in my wife's situation. It's just so many things uh, that's happened to her about with uh, breast cancer that uh, it's amazing what the Lord will do. And... You don't always have to wait. Sometimes it's very fast. Uh, she, of course, is wondering why she had to go through that. Uh, it's going to be a little testimony about her and the way the Lord has, has used her cancer treatment. Uh, she uh, She's a, a Norwex representative. She sells cleaning supplies, and it's basically done online. And she had a customer of hers that wanted a physical, instead of going online and looking at, at their catalog, she wanted a physical catalog, which they do supply, and she, my wife has. This lady was from over in Bracken County that wanted the catalog, and she said, well, if you're in Falmouth at some time, she says, I don't drive out of County, but if you're over here sometime, I can meet with you and get you a catalog. Well, the lady told her, she said, well, I work part-time, at a, a place in Falmouth, 
And she gave her the date that she would be there and the times she would be there so my wife could drive by and drop this catalog off. Well, it just so happens, it doesn't just so happen, it's just a Lord, it's a God thing. She uh, decides to run this catalog to this place of business to drop off for this lady. And of course, she wasn't there yet. My wife got there early, and the lady that she was supposed to drop it off to wasn't there yet. But the lady that was there working, when my wife walked in, she says, I need to talk to you. She says, I've been thinking about you, and I've been trying to think about a time to get a hold of you to talk to you. She says, they've found two lumps in my breast, and I need somebody to talk to. God put my wife there. And uh, they had a long conversation, and I, I think she was really relieved to hear of the progress my wife had, the things she had went through, and everything she was able to share with her. And it's just a God thing. Uh, God put my wife there early. God put that, that catalog in the ladies wanting that catalog. He just uh, he did that one step at a time to get that person in front of my wife so they could have a conversation. And uh, Tammy come home that night. She says, there's, a, there's one reason that I found why I had to go through this. He says, probably not the only reason, but she said, I found one today when she was telling me about what happened. So God does have a plan for us all. He has a plan for these scriptures that, that we like to, uh, to pass out. We know they work. We know God uses it. We know this is a living word of God. That You don't need somebody to read it to you. You can open it up and read it yourself and God will speak to you through that word and draw you close to him. Um, I don't know exactly how long I've been. Y'all don't have a clock for me. <laughs> I kept looking around this morning for a clock when I came in and I don't have one. But uh, I would like to close this morning uh, with a little plug for the Gideon members. Uh, we are in desperate need of new members. Uh, members don't have to speak. I don't have to do this. We have two or three members in our camp that don't speak. I probably shouldn't be speaking. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. We've got a couple that when they come and uh, speak for you and do a presentation, they'll do a song for you. <laughs> They're very good at it. <laughs> uh, but uh, you don't want me singing. <laughs> I like to sing, but you don't want to hear me singing. I sing in the shower. Uh, but uh, we are in desperate need of uh, members. If you know of anyone or yourself, if that little still small voice is talking to you in the back of your mind and it's something you think you would like to do, I'll tell you there's no better feeling than we were doing a distribution in one of the events Falmouth was having on Shelby Street. Here, It's been a couple of years ago. And it, it wasn't a parade or anything. It was just an event they were having on the street. And we decided to go up and carry Bibles with us and pass them out through this event. And I was just walking through the streets. I wasn't in a suit and a tie. I was just in regular clothes. But we carried these green buckets full of these little testaments. And on the green bucket, it says free Bible. And there's just there's not a better feeling in the world. I was walking down that street, and I was just walking real slow, just looking around, and I felt a little tug on my pants. I turned around, and there was a young person standing there and asked me if they could have one. And there's just not a better feeling in the world. And they had someone that you can place a Bible in her hands that really wanted. I mean, they she asked if she could have one because she knew what was in that bucket. And uh, it is very rewarding to be a Gideon. And those are one of the times that, uh, that it has been rewarding to me. It's happened more than once, of course. Uh, whenever you carry those buckets around with Bibles in them, you'd be surprised whose hands come out and they want one. Even adults. <laughs> Most of it, a lot of the time. But if uh, you know of someone or you'd like to become a Gideon yourself, uh, just let me or your, your church representative, I think is Jimmy Roseberry here, you can get in contact with him and uh, we can show you how to do that and we'd really love to have you. 
Uh, you do as much as you want in the Gideons. You can just pay your dues and be a Gideon, or you can become part of it, be a speaker. You can go on these distributions with us and walk in the parades with us. Uh, you can become a treasurer or secretary. We, we run the Gideons like a business. We have a president, vice president, we have a treasurer, secretary, uh, scripture chairman. We have several jobs in the Gideons that needs to be taken care of. Right now, I am the treasurer of the Gideons and the scripture chairman. I keep in stock the Bibles that we foresee being able to pass out. Uh, right now, we're, we're getting geared up to pass out our scriptures to the uh, fifth grade graduates here in the county, in the, the southern and northern, and we pass out scriptures to all of our graduating high school seniors. With the new laws and the new rules, we do that by way of standing out on the street with those green buckets again. Uh, we do that at the end of the commencement services for the fifth grades. We stand out on the street as they're leaving uh, and offer those up. If they want to stop, we'll hand one to them in their vehicles. We're not allowed on school properties anymore, as you know. <laughs> But uh, we have found other ways. There's other ways to do something. God will show you those ways. But we have very good luck doing that. Uh, to our graduating seniors in high school, we stand out on 27. Uh, at the high school, the last day of their practice, they let the seniors out early. They let them out right after practice. And we know that they'll be leaving kind of on their own, and it'll, that'll be the only group that'll be leaving. And we stand out there about noon on that day. And... Uh, pass out scriptures to our seniors, and you'd be surprised how many of them pull over and will ask for a scripture, ask for one of these testaments. So it's, it's a, a very rewarding ministry to be in. But there is a lot of work to do there. Uh, in closing this morning, the bulletin I passed out this morning, if you didn't come prepared to donate this morning, it is it converts into an envelope. It has our address of our post office box in Falmouth. You can donate to the Giddings at any time, any time during the year in any form or fashion. Uh, you can send that in uh, later on if necessary. But if God has blessed you with a little extra this morning, we're still buying these little testaments for about $1.52 a piece now. When I first started at Giddings, it was a dollar and a quarter. But with Inflation and the way things are going up, it costs us about a dollar fifty-two cents a piece for these little scriptures we purchase. And uh, most people can find that in a cup holder in their car. To be honest with you, I know I can in my truck probably. But uh, if you have a little extra to donate this morning, over top, over and above your church obligation or your family obligation, we would love to receive that. Only that, that money will only be used to purchase scriptures. It doesn't pay any expenses for the Gideons. It doesn't pay for any of our national offices or the people that are hard full-time to run the Gideon uh, membership. The money you donate here at your church, the money that goes that you would use through this card uh, fund only goes to purchase scriptures. Uh, that's all we use it for. It's not spent on anything else, so... Every dime of it will be going back out in the Lord's name. Uh, but uh, I wasn't told how the offering would be taken up this morning. If I'll be at the back of the church or if we'll be passing a plate. Just come to the back. Back of the church. <laughs> okay. I, I kind of missed that. I was looking this morning uh, for the Gideon card rack that, that we supply these cards for. I didn't find one here in the church. If you would like to have one. Or if it's here, uh, we can get you another one. We can fill it up with these cards for you to use. It's just a, it's just a very fulfilling way to buy scriptures and uh, purchase them in someone's name. Uh, but uh, if you'll you get a hold of Jimmy or somebody if you want one here, we'll we'll be glad to furnish one. But uh, whatever we can work out there, it is like I said, it's a very good program to use and uh, again the, the money's donated through that program is only used to buy these Bibles and, and little scriptures we pass out but thank you again so much for allowing us to come here this morning I got a testimony that's been weighing on my heart a little bit this morning uh, it's one that that happened right here in a 
close to our community a few years ago. I don't know if it happened before the last time I was here or not, but I'd like to share it with you again this morning if it's a repeat. But we had, it's, it's just very compelling because this guy was a trailing salesman. And that's what the two Gideons were uh, back in 1994 or 1894 that started this ministry. They were traveling businessmen that spent the night together in a motel where God laid it upon our heart to start this ministry. But this guy was a, a traveling salesman and he had come to Cincinnati on business. He was still employed at the time, but he wrote a two-page letter to the Gideons, and it ended up being circulated throughout the northern Kentucky and Cincinnati area because it was right from here. We had done a Bible, what we call a scripture blitz in the area a couple months before he was there, and we had just placed Bibles in the motel that he was staying at. And he wrote us a letter, and evidently his life was a mess. He was really down. Uh, his wife had just told him that she was leaving him for another man. He had three children. One of them was incarcerated at the time. Uh, the other one was in a gang in Columbus, Ohio. He only saw him uh, when he needed money. And uh, his work had just informed him that they had been bought out and his job would be, would be getting eliminated because they were going to do everything online from, from then on with the new company. So He was in a a really bad, dark place, and he'd come, he was still working, he'd come to Cincinnati on work, and he had brought a gun with him, and he didn't aim on going home. He said he had brought that gun with him to, to end his life while he was here, away from his family, so they didn't have to go through that tragedy. But he said he went to that motel room that night, and uh, he got the gun out, and he laid it on his bed beside him. He turned the television up as loud as it would go to, to try to help muffle the sound and he looked around the room and he, he needed something to write a note on he wanted to leave a note to explain to him and tell him that he was sorry but that he just didn't feel like he could go on he couldn't find a note anywhere or a pencil to write anything on so he pulled open that drawer in that nightstand the only thing in there was that Gideon Bible and he said I looked at the Bible and he said something just told me I needed to pick it up he said I picked it up I got it out of the drawer. And he said, I really didn't open it up to start with. He said, I just held it. And he said, the more I sat there and looked at that Bible, the more I knew I needed to open it up. And he opened it up. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit because he told us the exact place he opened it up in the chapter and what he read, but I can't remember that off the top of my head. It comes with age, I'm sorry. But what he read put him on the path to know Jesus Christ, to know that he had a way out, to know that it wasn't the end that night. And he said he turned the television down and put the gun away, and he just kept reading the Bible that night. And he said later on, when he finished his work in Cincinnati, he continued home to find out that his the company that had bought his company and decided to eliminate his job had had a change of heart and uh, they were going to keep him on and they were actually going to make him a director for the area because he had been with them so long. But he said, my life has got back on track. He said, I didn't reconcile with my wife, but I have reconciled with my children. We are going to church on a regular basis. And uh, he said that he came to know Jesus Christ just from that night in that motel with that Bible that was there for him. We do know they work. We, we get testimony sent in, which is encouraging to us, but all the time about the way these scriptures have touched someone's heart and led them to know Jesus Christ and, and, and changed their life in a 180 degree difference. But again, thank you for allowing us to be here and thank you for continuing to support the local Gideons here in the county. Thank you very much.